Welcome. I'm Melissa Bean. Uh, some of you know me as Chairman of the Midwest for J.P. Morgan Chase. What a lot of you don't know is that I'm Vice Chair of the Board for One Million Degrees. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to be part of the organization and to welcome you all here uh, this morning. It's a wonderful, sunny October 1st in Chicago. And the Cubs are in the playoffs. Uh, it's a great, uh, great beginning. First, we have Michael Reinstorf here from the Bulls, so we're very hopeful <laughs> about the Bulls as well. So someone told me, and I'll have to confirm this with Tom Ricketts, that the Chicago Athletic Club logo that you see, the C's, that the Cubs liked it so much that they adopted it as their logo. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing to see on the windows here. So I really want to ask you to join me in thanking Mayor Emanuel for joining us here uh, this morning. Where is he sitting? Where's the mayor? There he is. Thank you so much. So, Ram, I know when we worked in Washington together, you were known to be in the pool at 5 in the morning getting your laps in. Did you use the pool here uh, this morning? I used my own pool. Okay. So he did get it. <laughs> and he used to give me a hard time about how poor my diet was and that I needed to get my act together. I'm still working on that. So we have a great group of Chicago's corporate leaders and CEOs today gathered in support of our community colleges, the students that attend them, uh, and this great city. And when you bring so many of you together, we know good things happen. I want to thank my fellow OMD board members and committee members who support the work and the mission but also helped bring all of you together to join us today. You're gonna to hear from our mayor about the role community, college, community colleges play in providing a talent pipeline for Chicago. You'll also hear about One Million Degrees, a Chicago-based organization, and the unique and successful work they do to prepare their low-income but highly motivated community college scholars to enter the workforce. The talent pipeline is critical to Chicago's economic growth. And J.P. Morgan Chase recently published a Chicago-specific skills gap report called Growing Skills for a Growing Chicago. It describes the opportunity gap between the thousands of middle skill jobs created by the region's economy and the lack of career readiness of many of our citizens. I wanted to share a couple statistics with you. Some of the good news is that this region has added 200,000 jobs since 2010. And unemployment fell to 6.4% in March from 10.5 in 2010. Job growth is projected to be 8.9% between 2010 and 2020. And, and so here's where we're headed. 44% of the jobs in the Chicago region are middle skill occupations which require more than a high school education, but less than a bachelor's degree. Half of those jobs are what we call target middle skill jobs. They're high demand, but also livable wages. The medium hourly wage of $26.93 is higher than the region's living wage, according to uh, MIT's living wage calculation of only 18.98 per hour. The best news is that 28,000 of these job openings are projected every year in Chicagoland over the next five years. And 20 of those 28,000 jobs per year are in two sectors, healthcare and transportation distribution and logistics. I share those stats with you because I know everyone here is committed to supporting the economic growth of our city, our state, uh, and, and this region. And my connection to OMD personally, but also the reason J.P. Morgan Chase is so committed to strengthening our partnership with OMD is that they're one of the important organizations stepping up to help fill that pipeline with qualified candidates. And also, they're really delivering results. They deliver results for students, where they're really bringing transformational change to their lives. They're bringing results for the city and the state. They're bringing results to the business partners and foundations that support them and to the employers who are hiring these talented individuals. Please eat while I'm talking. I see some of you waiting. Go ahead and start eating. Um, 
And the, and the work that they're doing uh, is really working. So the transformational change in the lives of these scholars means that while most of them have full-time jobs and are supporting families while they're carrying a full-time academic load, OMD is supporting them through that burdensome journey. And not just making sure that they graduate, but preparing them for being a good employee, giving them the confidence and the communication skills to compete in the workplace for jobs at companies like yours. And when they do get those jobs, uh, that's working as well. 93% of OMD alumni are employed full-time and receiving benefits, including health insurance and retirement benefits. Their average household income is 49,000. You'll see some of those stats in the information that's on your tables. It's working for Chicago because in community college, uh, community college graduation rates for the state of Illinois are at 20%. The OMD scholars in those community colleges are graduating at 70%. And in terms of the business partners and foundations who support OMD, we support plenty of organizations uh, for the good work they do, but we don't always get that kind of measurable impact. And there's also intangible benefits. I know for our JP Morgan Chase employees who get involved with OMD scholars, it transforms their lives as well. So we've all participated in a lot of the many walks that we do, and I was out on a walk recently and came back with employees, and everybody loves to get a break from their desk, and they know they're helping a good cause. But in, in helping with OMD by being involved and sharing what they do in the workplace, by being mentors and working with these young people, it's a whole different level of connection. And so we found our employee engagement has really improved through programs like what we do with OMD. And lastly, the employers, who all of which are trying to improve uh, the, their diverse talent pool uh, internally and are looking for great qualified candidates that they can work with and particularly we want to have impact in low-income communities there's a pipeline that comes out of this graduate pool that makes a difference so given that kind of impact it's not surprising that the mayor is asking OMD to increase the number of scholars they serve and uh, and so we're certainly hoping all of you are interested in helping OMD to scale and have even greater impact um, and on that note, I want to thank you all for the leadership that you demonstrate every day in your own organizations and all the, all the good uh, works that you do. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for participating today. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a man who needs no introduction, who I had the opportunity to serve with in Washington. And I learned there, and we all see now, that he doesn't just talk it, he walks it in terms of policy. He's visionary, he's committed, and he's tough when it matters. But some of us also get to see his softer side as a father who doesn't just care about his own kids, but cares about all of the kids in this city, this state, and this country. We're proud to call him mayor of this great city, and we know he's keeping his values intact as he fights through the ongoing budget battles. But his values are about making this city work for every man, woman, and child. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Thank you. Uh, obviously, you know the importance of this, so you wouldn't be here. Uh, for the breakfast, if you didn't think of it, I know about the importance. Uh, let me, though, speak to a couple things that we're trying to do at the community colleges, why they're integral to what we're trying to do here in the city of Chicago. And I say that on the morning in which we're announcing today that uh, ConAgra is leading Omaha coming to the city of Chicago. We know getting a close to When we look at it, just one side note on that, both with Kraft, ADM and now ConAgra, Chicago is completing once again, uh, returning uh, to being the capital uh, for food and food companies to see the city of Chicago as their corporate headquarters. And that announcement comes to 500 jobs, or around 500 jobs to the city of Chicago. I see the community colleges, and I want to tell you two stories. When I was in Congress, I had Wright Community College in my congressional district, and Truman was just like a block outside the district, but a lot of my constituents went there and worked on a couple things. But when I became mayor, uh, I was on uh, 
35th Street L. I'm about to go through an announcement. And I ran into a young man. I was going on my way up. We were about to announce that we were going to totally redo the red line south. And I said, uh, where are you going? And some of you may have heard this story before. And he said, just keep eating then if you've heard it. <laughs> because there's what I love about public service, also campaigning, is you have these moments, and Melissa knows what I'm talking about. They just kind of sit and they sear into your brain. I said, where are you, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to Target. That's where I work. I said, oh. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm working you know, in the back uh, on supplies. I said, where are you coming from? He says, Harold Washington. So what are you studying? He goes, oh, I'm getting my business administration degree. I said, great. I said, how much more? And he you know, told me like a couple more credits. My, as I'm walking away, he's doing everything we would want of him. Working full time, going to school, and he's going on a premise that when he graduates, he's got a BA, business administration. And he's betting on one thing that we all owe him, the name Harold Washington. When I came out of Sarah Lawrence, I mean, no disrespect to Sarah Lawrence, I had a great experience, five women for every guy, it was unbelievable college. <laughs> <laughs> but I was betting on one thing, it's called Sarah Lawrence. Same thing when I graduated from Northwestern. I mean, it's great education, but you're betting on the reputation, that's what you're investing in. It means something when you, on the other side, see that resume. And I gotta be honest, the city of Chicago was not holding up its side of the bargain to that man. Who here has hired a person out of Harold Washington in the last 10 years? Because they said Harold Washington, Al Harvey, Kennedy King, Truman, Wright. Which doors did it open because of its reputation? Uh, that's, not, that's also true for the city. I'm not, this is not a guilt trip to you. The second thing is when I was recruiting uh, uh, Dow in Michigan, I was talking to them about opening up an operation here in Chicago, which they eventually did. They mentioned to me that they work with Kellogg Business School and they do a curriculum at Kellogg that specifically trains them for what they're looking for. These two events happened within about five weeks of each other. So I told Cheryl Hyman, we're going to reorganize the community colleges based on the German model which is every school will have an industry focus. You want to be a nurse? You want to be a home practitioner? You want to do healthcare IT? You're going to go to Malcolm X, Abbott, Baxter, Olive, uh, Walgreens, All Strip, North Rush, Northwestern, Children's, Stroger, we'll do the curriculum, we'll do the training. You want to be in transportation, distribution, logistics? Olive Harvey, UPS, FedEx, you can go down with CSX, US, uh, uh, Norfolk Southern, all do the curriculum, the training for the teachers. Each school has an industry specific focus on the most promising fields for jobs in the city of Chicago in the next seven years. Kennedy King is the hospitality and culinary. It is not an accident that Whole Foods is opening up right across the street from Kennedy King, their first uh, grocery store in a food desert. Why is Aerotram building the largest air cargo facility in a gateway airport in America, is that up here? Yes, it has long runways. They look for truck drivers. Olive Harvey has a consistent CDL program for them. So the actual community college is not only serving our economy and jobs, but is making sure that when you walk out, the reputation, if you want to become a nurse, and you said I was over at Malcolm X, Rush knows they did the curriculum at Malcolm, at, uh, Malcolm X, and they have, a, they have a stake in that success. So that has taken what now the World Bank now calls the Chicago Community College System, the single best college to career skill development in America. <laughs> These young men and women, and, not, and I want to also be honest with you, the young men and women are not, you know, that's some of the high school students. It's a lot of also employees who are going back to get skills to trade up. So it's not just young men and women, although, yes, college bound, etc. Now I want to also, having studied this, folks, it was our community colleges 
that served as a gateway for all our veterans returning from World War II. It was not until the Sputnik crisis that we decided to go to the university-based research base and make that our priority. The community colleges, when everybody talks about the greatest generation and what they did for the economy post-World War II, it was the community colleges that were at that set on the educational piece for that. And what we're doing today in Chicago and other cities and other states across the country is returning to the role the community colleges played in being an economic engine in skills and educational attainment. The thing I'm also very excited about is last year we announced this year was the first year. And the only city in America, if you get a B average in our high schools, community college is free in the city of Chicago. Look, 85% of all the jobs come in the city of Chicago, which is true across the country, now require two years post high school education. Every other city and every other state is stuck in the 20th century education model. 12th grade, we're done. Yet the jobs you're looking for require a minimum of two years after 12th grade. And we haven't updated the educational system to meet the 21st century. Well, in all due respect, Chicago is done with that. Now, I will tell you, if you haven't, and you sometimes can get cynical on this job, I met with the parents whose kids now are those Chicago stars about four weeks ago. If you ever get cynical in life, go meet with the parents who you just saved from a second job or a second mortgage because they had no idea how they were going to get their kids an education. 62% of the first Chicago stars, female. 67% Hispanic. And trust me, our graduating class out of Chicago Public Schools is not 67% Hispanic and is not 62% female. And every one of them, almost to the person, is going on to a four-year institution because they could not afford the first two years. UIC just announced with us three weeks ago, if you maintain a B average, they're going to guarantee you enrollment in UIC and $2,500 tuition. You have to maintain that B average in community college. And the reason I want you to be here, the reason I want you to support this, a lot of our kids, this is the first one in their families to go to college. Now, I just dropped my son off at school, first one. Or as I like to say, when you drop them off at kindergarten, they cry. When you drop them off at college, you cry. Okay? I said to Amy the other day, he's alive. I got a text. <laughs> he's looking at the first text. Where's the laundry detergent? <laughs> it's where your mother said it was, you jerk. <laughs> if you had listened to her, you'd know where it is. I'm not telling you. <laughs> but the point is, I'm going to also be frank. Mm -hmm. Amy and I can afford to give Zach, Alana, and Leia all the support they need. There, ain't, there is not a problem. We can't help them. We have both the experience, the history, and the capacity to do it. What you're doing is giving every one of the kids and adults, mainly kids, who go to community colleges here in the city of Chicago, the support we give our own kids. That simple. I can dress it up. I can put lipstick on it for you. I can make it really look different for you. And it's the difference, and everybody that knows, every one of us know it. Our kids run into these challenges, and we're there. The laundry detergent is under your bed. It's where your mother put it. I don't know why you're looking for the laundry detergent. You're taking that laundry over to your Uncle Ari's house to do anyway. So <laughs> That's the truth. And what One Million Degrees does is give these young men and women the capability, the support to get to the goal line. The goal line wasn't getting in. The goal line is to get out. I owe you as the mayor. And I need to be held accountable that the community colleges have an educational system valued with the reputation that goes with it. And it's an ongoing work progress. I know we're better than we were before. We're not where we need to be. I ask you, and the reason I'm here, besides the break free breakfast, I ask you to be here to give these young men and women the support along the way so that their B average that they earned in high school is not where they get dropped off. High school is no longer the destination. It's a milestone on their education. Getting all the way through graduation is the goal. 
and your support is the good difference, trust me, between kids who face a tremendous amount of headway Un in an uncharted, unknown world. It is the difference between them staying with it and saying, I'm going to drop out, I'll come back, and you and I both know they never do it. Or they do it too infrequently. So I'm asking you, you know why this is important. You know why you're here. I want you to continue to support One Million Degrees because there's a difference between Chicago being a world-class city and a world-class city only for some of us. Thank you. I want to welcome you again all here, and I want to thank the mayor for your, his time this morning. Mayor, thank you for your commitment to community college students in Chicago and for your support um, of our organization and the work that we do with these incredibly high potential, um, hardworking scholars. Um, I'm pleased to introduce now some individuals uh, on our panel who are going to share their perspectives on um, their involvement with One Million Degrees and why they choose to invest their time and their, and their dollars in our expansion. Nick and Sean and Laura and Steve, if you guys would come on up. I'm going to introduce you as you come up. First, we have Nick Mobley, who is a current OMD scholar at Kennedy King College in Englewood. Nick will graduate this spring with his Associates uh, of Science and Engineering and will transfer to UIC to earn his Bachelor's in Electrical Engineering. I'm also pleased to welcome Sean Mayberry, who's an alumnus of the OMD program from 2011. Sean attended Truman College in Uptown and then transferred to Loyola University where he earned his Bachelor's in Communications. Sean's also a member of the One Million Degrees Associates Board and recently returned to be a volunteer coach at our Kennedy King program. <laughs> I want to welcome Laura Coy, Senior Manager of Corporate Social Responsibility at Granger. Laura is the leading architect of Granger's Corporate Social Responsibility Investment Strategies, Community Affairs, and Employee Engagement and she's been leading the partnership with One Million Degrees at Granger. We're so happy you're here. And finally, um, I want to welcome Steve Beard, Executive Vice President, General Counsel, and Chief Operating Officer at Hydric and Struggles. And Steve is also a member of the Board of Directors of A Better Chicago, which has been a pivotal funder for One Million Degrees. Thank you so much. We're also very eager to hear your thoughts and get your questions this morning, uh, but we want to respect your, your schedules. Um, there's a notepad in front of each of your places. Um, as you listen, if questions come up, um, please feel free to jot them down and signal one of our staff and we'll pick those up. Um, and include your name so that if we don't get a chance to address it from the panel this morning, we can follow up with you personally with those answers. So Nick, I'd like to start with you, and I also want to remind our panel that we are in a tight timeline. Um, uh, so you're beginning your second year as an OMB scholar at Kennedy King College. What made you apply to the program and just share a few of the, of the highlights of your first year's experience? Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm a first year scholar, second year scholar with OMB. I returned back to school in uh, 2014, spring semester. I uh, sold cars for a few years, raised a family, and uh, I got back in school with the ambition and goal uh, of, of getting a four-year degree in engineering, doing what I really wanted to do several years earlier. And I had a rough semester. Uh, I did very well at that, doing that. And over the summer, I was considering giving up. And I, I received an email from uh, President of Kennedy King College. You know, it, used, it was my spam folder, and I read it, and it said, uh, opportunity for somebody who wants to succeed in school. So I thought, okay, let me check it out. It said no academic requirement. And I came into the session, I met with my program coordinator, and he talked to me about a GPA being like a credit score. And that was something I could relate to. I sold cars. And, and he said, well, you know, the higher credit score you have, the farther you can make it. Uh, and he set me up with a tutor. And I, I had an opportunity to, uh, to 
speak with tutors at Kennedy King, but each time I went to the learning center, I didn't have the courage to walk to the door. You know, it just felt weird. I, I wasn't used to it. And so after a month with OMD, my grades turned around. I, I retook all the classes that I took the previous semester, and I got all the ladies. And, you know, it, it started from when I went to my first development session. It's a session we hold every once a month on the Saturdays. And I meet with a, a, a professional coach and talk about our goals. They referred to me as a scholar. And I, I took that and I ran with it. I, I, I'm a scholar to this day, also an ambassador. I, um, I go out and, and introduce OMD to, to students across Chicago, potential students. And, who, who may want to succeed but don't know how. So that's what OMD has been for me. They've been my navigation, my GPS system through uh, city colleges. And, and I thank everybody for coming out here this morning to, to hear our call. Thank you. So Sean, you've come full circle in the OMD community. Um, you joined us in 2008 as a scholar at Truman. Um, as we talked about. So now that you're a few years out of a million degrees, can you share kind of what has stayed with you and what has the impact been in your life? Um, I think my story is similar to Nick's. Um, I learned about one million degrees while I was at Harry S. Truman College through a program called TRIO. Um, and it really is um, small organizations like that that really help guide you through the process and I was able to complete it. Um, school in four years. I started off in Truman and um, in, in 2007, 2005 my mom passed away um, while I was a senior in high school so I, I took a little detour and um, I ended up being a bathroom brusher at Echo and one day I realized um, this can't take me very far um, and so I stumbled upon Truman and it literally changed my life. Um, and then once I stumbled upon one million degrees, I mean, really, my life really made a 360. Um, I went from being a bathroom brusher at Petco to sitting in boardrooms with Tony Lorenz um, at Chicago 2016 Olympic bid. Um, it was really a life changer. And um, I know that this program works. Um, and I'm able to sit on the associates board and really see us grow and see people come together um, for students that are really, really um, working hard to um, make one million degrees proud because they know that they're, they're rooted for us. And so it's been an amazing journey um, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you all for coming out. So Laura. Granger has a history of investing in community college students, so you're not, you're not new to this rodeo. Um, so can you tell us just a little bit about why that is, why you find that important, and why are you choosing to invest in one million degrees? Great question. Um, you know, Granger, I have been, had an honor of working here for about eight years, and when I started, we had a community college scholarship at seven community colleges across the country. And it was so phenomenal that we decided to expand that scholarship, and now we have a scholarship program at 125 community colleges across the country. So why it's important to Granger, like many of you, we had traditional recruiting mechanisms of looking at talent from four-year institutions. But if you look at our talent pipeline, we're uh, North America's leading distributor of industrial supplies. Community college students are actually the lifeblood of our industry. And not just us as a hiring agent, but our suppliers who manufacture our products, internally our supply chain expertise, and then the customers who are keeping our facilities running and our people safe. These are all community college viable careers. And we have had so much success with it that we're continuing to expand it. Next year is the 10th anniversary. And we're also nurturing some relationships with both city colleges and the College of Lake County to um, truly make an impact. Um, now more than ever, I think it's important to support community colleges because of the mayor's great statements and the work that J.P. Chase Morgan has done on the statistics around middle skills and competitiveness. But I'll tell you what, I was talking to Paige and Adrian Peace, who's one of our executives on the board of OMD. Um, we're, we're partnering with OMD. It's, just, it's been such a gem to find you. We are so proud to provide financial support to students. 
but without the support and the coaching and the nurturing, it's just little tiny things along the way. It might be knowing where your laundry curtain is, it might be helping someone with calculus. Um, OMD provides the support and the structure that students need to truly be successful. You guys all know the completion rates. You know that we can all make a huge difference in that. Um, and I would just close by saying that it's a mutually beneficial partnership working with OMD. Our team members, Adrian, our coaches who work with OMD, they get just as much out of it as the students do. Um, we're doing this for the scholars of OMD, but every person who comes back that has had an interaction with these students comes back a better Granger employee. So that's in a nutshell why we are so proud to be partners with OMD and support community colleges. Thank you. And Steve, um, A Better Chicago has been uh, instrumental in our growth, um, a pivotal funder for us. Um, so can you talk a little bit about A Better Chicago and why you've chosen to invest in, in One Million Degrees? Sure, good morning. Um, we're thrilled to support a better, uh, to support One Million Degrees. Um, a Better Chicago is a venture philanthropy, and basically we take what we believe to be a very innovative approach to identifying, supporting, and scaling the best educational nonprofits in Chicago. And you know we've got a room of uh, investment professionals here, and I think they can appreciate uh, the fact that we take a very investment-oriented approach to identifying, vetting those organizations, and really scaling them on, on a few different dimensions. First is the efficacy of the program, which is very important to us. The strength of the leadership of those programs is also critical. The efficiency of their operations, and perhaps most importantly, their ability to scale up and really magnify their impact. And on all of those dimensions, we've been truly, truly impressed with one million degrees. Um, community colleges are very important. We've heard a lot about that this morning. But the fact is that the graduation rates at community colleges, both in Chicago and nationally, are really quite low. And one million degrees is the rare organization that not only improves those outcomes, but does so in dramatic fashion. And so we're, we're really, really excited about the possibilities going forward for this organization to really drive up the outcomes of community colleges in and around Chicago. So at One Million Degrees, you have a really, really strong management team led by Paige and her folks. They give us great confidence in their ability to execute against an aggressive growth plan and manage that growth effectively. Uh, the results of the program we love. You all know about those and they speak for themselves. But more importantly, we think those results can be replicated at a greater scale and can really move the needle in a meaningful way. And it's for all of those reasons that the British Chicago has decided to really double down on its commitment to one million degrees. And most recently, uh, we've approved a three-year, $750,000 commitment to this organization. predictable commodity. And it's really programs like One Million Degrees that make it possible for otherwise gifted, talented kids like these gentlemen to go on and do great things with their lives. So it's a very, very important program, but more importantly, it's a successful program. Thank you. And, uh, we're obviously thrilled to get the news of the new investment, so thank you so much. Um, so this is a question for the, the whole panel. Um, there's been a lot of buzz in the national and local news and uh, through the mayor's le leadership, Chicago is at the forefront of pushing the community college agenda. Um, so what is the inside story? What else would you like the people in this room to understand about community college students and how we all collectively can be set up uh, to be successful in this space? Nick and Sean speak for themselves. I just want to give them another round of applause. <laughs> this is why we do it. You know, Granger's done a lot of work. We've done a, a, a program called Trades in Focus to raise visibility for 
how much people make in the skilled trades, what they mean, how lucrative they are. Um, we've created a skilled trades playbook for industry to better partner with community colleges. But I just, I want people to know um, how amazing our community colleges are and how talented our community college students are. We have to raise the profile. I loved your comments, Mayor, around um, how we need to do that as employers. Uh, we have a slogan at Granger, and it's called Put the Community Back in Community Colleges. If you're driving by your community college every day and you're not going there to understand the curriculum that they can provide your employees or the curriculum that you could help them build to better structure their uh, curriculum to be workforce ready for you, um, you know, take the time and get to know your community college. Make that the community college that you foster, nurture, and you participate in, and OMD is a great channel for doing that. I would like to say, um, right now at the City Colleges, I, again, I said, I, I'm returning from school some years ago. Uh, there was no blackboard, there was no digital uh, tools to, to deal with college. Everything was in a book. So now the city, uh, city of Chicago Colleges have the career network so that if you, you know, as you're in school, you can uh, access a career coach on the campus. OMD, my, uh, our program coordinators also have a relationship with those uh, career coordinators through uh, the City Colleges Career Center. And those are different ways to, to move you in the direction that you're focusing on. Um, and there's always improvements. You know, each semester I go on, I see um, we just updated our uh, online system, so everything's on one page, partnership with Outlook. Um, and OMD supports everything. We have a working relationship. Um, this semester, or the new scholars coming in, I believe we have uh, a setup like we have at Kennedy King. It's like that at Olive Harvey. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a, a bit of incoming scholars who are having the same opportunity that we have. And if you look on the campus, you know who's in OMD because you know we're leading the campus. It, 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 it's a certain vibe. And I'll pick you back up from Nick. Um, and I think one of the amazing things about community college is that um, definitely for first year um, students, first generation students, is that it's more of a community. Um, it's a smaller um, environment. So you're able to um, meet people. Um, a counselor handed me a sheet to map out my two year um, experience at Truman. And I was able to graduate in two years because I had a map and I was able to um, stick with it, and they were checking in on me. Um, and the classrooms are smaller um, versus a larger university. Um, and I think that that's the type of thing that um, certain students need. They need that community feeling. They need um, some of that one-on-one -on -one advice, and they need people checking in on them. Um, and I think community colleges offers that, and there's programs in there that help cater to students that may need a little bit more attention, like OMD, to ensure success. Um, and I think that's how we're creating um, students that are graduating and going on to succeed. I guess the only thing I would uh, add to that is, um, I think we, we talked a lot about the role of community colleges in the local economy, national economy, and the, the gap between skills and employers need. Uh, and, um, and the, the students that are able to deliver on those. But I think it's also important to, to note that community colleges provide a really, really tremendous opportunity for non-traditional students. And there are lots of students who, uh, who would very much like to pursue higher education, uh, but because of uh, financial reasons, personal reasons, uh, getting a foothold at a four-year university is just a tough, tough feat. And so for the working parent, uh, for the individual that's caring for parents at home, for the individual uh, who has to uh, balance a multitude of commitments, that foothold that a community college provides them very often eases their way to a four-year degree. And so uh, it, it, is, um, it is a great and important alternative for that kind of individual and really just widens the funnel of opportunity uh, for students at large. So very, very important. I want to thank you all again for your expertise, and um, it's such a pleasure knowing all of you and getting to work with you. So please join me in one more round of applause for our panel.
It is now my true pleasure to introduce uh, one of the co-founders of One Million Degrees, the chairman of our board of directors, and my boss, who I happen to like and respect very much, Dave Shearer, founded OMD in 2006 with his partners Rosa Zaraga and Michael Golden. In doing so, he has already changed many people's lives, including mine. Dave is principal at Origin Capital Partners, a real estate investment firm here in Chicago. So please join me in welcoming Dave. Exactly 15 minutes, we run OMD like a business, we start on time, we end on time. That's my advice from uh, Jason Tyler. Um, we've heard amazing things this morning, and, and I don't want to be repetitive. Um, one of the ultimate uh, compliments of an organization as it grows, and, and we truly are, are, are quite large now, if you think about not, not just in terms of budget, but the number of people that we're coordinating. Um, it's not just 425 students. There's 425 volunteer coaches from across the city who give their time. So the organization itself has multiple constituencies. We have students, we have coaches, we have investors, we have corporate partners. There really are a lot of constituencies to serve. It's a very complicated model. Let me take you a little bit uh, back to the beginning. Um, earlier this morning, the mayor asked me, why did you do this? Why, why did you and others start this? In 2005, this, this is not a new organization. We've been at this for, for over 10 years. And, and many in the room, and, and just to mention one, Mesro, you've been around supporting this organization since 2007. Um, and Jim Tyree was one of our very, very early adopters. And Mesro continues to be a, a partner. J.P. Morgan has been supporting us for over seven years. The early adopters came. And, and now uh, we're at a point where I think we can truly scale this. Um, up to the next level. But in the beginning, why did we start? Um, we started with a simple premise. Um, what the mayor so eloquently went over this morning, what he saw as untapped potential, we saw the same thing in 2005. But there were a lot of questions we had to answer. The first was, as an entrepreneur, this is a huge market. They have 100,000 students. There is no private sector investment, zero. Why is that? is that? Is that an opportunity or a trap? Is it because these colleges aren't capable of partnership? Is it because the students, even if we provide all the supports that you hear about, aren't capable of attaining these degrees? We had to answer those questions, and we had to build a model to try to come up with those answers. On the other side of the table, you had a, a large bureaucracy that's looking at a very small organization trying to answer their questions. Are they worth our time? We have 100,000 students. They're trying to serve 50. How's this going to work? How do we partner? And keep in mind, we weren't just writing a check. We were demanding them to be a true partner. We needed to share information. The students in our program, and I'm not sure this one point was clearly shared, all of the services that we provide, whether it's financial, personal, professional development, it comes with a contract. They sign a contract. It's their first true contract a lot of times in life where we're saying, look, we're going to do all these things, but you have to show up at the table too. And, and our students and alums here, they, 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 they can tell you about that. In order to enforce that contract, we have to have information. In order to get that information, we need to be a partner with the colleges at a level that someone who's just writing a check is not. So both sides of the table had to answer those questions. And I can tell you today, it's been 10 years. Those questions are fully answered. The City College of Chicago are a wonderful partner. We've grown with them from 50 students to 425 a day. We can continue to grow with them. I think we've also answered their questions. We weren't someone who was going to show up and then go away in two years when things got hard. And they do get hard. And we've stuck around. And we've gotten the program better and better each year. How do we deliver a program that is good enough to grow and sustain a 70% graduation rate over three times the state average every year, every year. And the answer is we have an unbelievable team. You met Paige earlier. She has experience in the private sector and at CPS and large bureaucracies. 
She has an MBA from Kellogg, but it doesn't stop there. Our chief operating officer and our senior director of programs have MBAs from Booth. We are an organization that's built to scale and built to partner with corporations. We view a nonprofit as if we are for profit. We have to grow and we have to deliver a quality product at a price that justifies your investment. So let me just tell one very, very brief story. And, and if I'm over, ring a bell. Um, an investment in Victor Perez, Victor couldn't be here today, um, and I'll get back to why, Kim. Um, Victor started with us in 2010. Um, he was right out of CPS, um, came from uh, a Southside CPS school, and he was going to Daily College. Um, early on in the program, Victor stated his goal was he, he wanted to pass his classes. As we know now, that won't keep you in our program. You have to get a 2.5 GPA and you have to attend all our events to stay in the program. But Victor probably was slow playing us. Um, he wound up being an amazing student. Um, he took advantage of all the resources that were offered to him, the tutoring, the mentoring, the professional development. He got a 3.5 GPA daily, transferred to DePaul, got a 3.0 at DePaul, majoring in accounting. And he was offered an internship at Ernst & Young. Um, that he applied for and received. Victor now has his accounting degree, and he has started at Ernst Young a month ago. Um, back to Kim, Ernst Young wouldn't let him come here today because he's on an audit team. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're a tough group. <laughs> but my point is, as we stand today, there's, there's hundreds of stories just like Victor's. But the goal is to have thousands. The goal is to have thousands, and if you're successful in doing that, and I think we are, I think we will be, um, you're changing not only Victor and his family and his community, but the fabric of this region. Um, it's transformational change, and it's within reach. Um, we've shown you growth, we've shown you effective growth, and we've shown you the ability, and we'll continue to show you the ability to do this again. Um, I appreciated the comments of the Better Chicago, thank you. I, I don't know where you are, uh, but thank you. Um, there's other venture philanthropy donors in this room today, um, two, two of which are social venture partners, another venture philanthropy group. They not only give money, just as Better Chicago, but they also give strategic advice and support, and we take advantage of that. And the third is Invest for Kids Chicago. Now, what's important to remember about these groups they didn't just invest in OMD. Because when you buy a company, you do diligence, but you don't truly know the company. You know the company a year later. They bought the company, but they reinvested in the company. And they reinvest in the company because they see that we have the culture and the process and the people to actually grow this to the next level. So thank you all for your support and your leadership. So I certainly want to thank the mayor for, for coming today. I thought his, his uh, comments were extraordinary. Um, I want to thank uh, Chancellor Cheryl Hyman, who's been an amazing partner for the last three years as we've grown and they've transformed their side and, and created a better product at community colleges, which ultimately, to the mayor's point, creates a better brand for the graduates. I want to thank our sponsors today. I mentioned Mesero, Richard Price, uh, but also Michael Sachs, Ken Griffin, Melissa Bean was extraordinary uh, in putting this together. Um, of course, Chris Keogh, thank you, and Ken Griffin. Um, without their support, this wouldn't have been possible today um, because not only did they help uh, financially, but they also helped with um, getting people to attend. The idea was to introduce this to a new group that maybe hadn't heard of this previously. So lastly, I want to thank you. I think that I've, I've met my time uh, limits, thank you. And I want to make sure that you understand there are ways to support our growth. Our, our goal, we're at 425 students right now, our goal is to get to 1,000 students by 2018. We believe we can do that because last year we grew 90%, this year we grew 70%, and we're still delivering the same quality program. Um, how do you support us? 
Well, the first way is you can sponsor a school. We've already rolled out a program at Kennedy King. We call it the Embedded Model, where we have our actual support staff at the school. Our program is a high-touch program. It's hard to create change at the student-by-student -student level. It requires constant uh, contact with the students. So we've improved the model, and that's with the support of the mayor and, and Chancellor Hyman. We have dedicated office space at Kennedy King. This year, we expanded that. I'm sorry, I got this wrong. We, we rolled out Olive Harvey. This year, we expanded to Kennedy King and Englewood. So one opportunity to support is to sponsor one of these schools, and that would be at a price of $250,000. Another way to support is to sponsor a cohort. That's sponsoring a group of students within a school, 50 students to be exact, and that's at a price of $100,000. These are conversations that we want to begin to have. The reality is there's many, many ways that you can support us. We have a constant need for coaches on the other side as well. Um, I think if you talk to some of the corporations we work with, they will tell you that their people and their companies um, receive a lot back in terms of their own company culture when they partner with us. So I would welcome uh, everyone to follow up with us, whether it's me or Paige or our staff or some of the board members that are at your table. Thank you for your time. I think I made it for 9 o'clock. Thank you.